The world she saw, Defense of Trust Part 2. How is this gonna get resolved? I have no idea. Damn, poor Armin, man. He must be in total shock. They're, they're gone. You didn't see what we saw. Oh no, this poor kid. Oh no, stop, stop. Yeah. Is this how she deals with stress? Good guy, Connie. Damn, man, I feel so bad for Armin. No, it's not. Oh no, it just gets worse and worse. Oh no, this is the, the couple, right? Stop. Make it stop. Yeah. It was all fun and games until we got into the real world and everyone died. I got lulled into a false sense of security. Even joking about people dying. I'm like, well, it can't be that many people that quickly. But it was. Man, I feel so bad for Armin and I feel really worried about him because you can see how this could just destroy his whole everything. Like, I can see this going a number of different ways for him, and one of them is him just becoming really cynical and hateful. Becoming nihilistic, thinking that the world has no value, that everything's suffering. And I couldn't blame him for that at all, given what he's witnessed and the world that he lives in. But the other side of that, the hopeful side of that, is that he can use it to become stronger. That's what you hope. You hope he doesn't fall into just despair and never never gets out of it. I think part of what he's saying is valuable. He's having some insight about the world, right? That he realizes his eyes have been closed to what the actual state of existence is. But I think that that's not the whole story, and the, the more complete picture is like, there is suffering and there is a lot of cruelty, and like Life is inherently unfair in many ways, but you aspire to be the person who makes it better, not worse. You aspire to be someone like Eren, even though Eren's a little bit crazy, or Mikasa, or someone else who's actually standing up trying to make the world better at great personal sacrifice, instead of just nihilism and hate. Attack on Titan lesson one, don't get attached. <laughs> Meanwhile, the human's fighting. This is why you need hand-to-hand -hand combat. You're not making any friends right now. Daddy's probably dead. Oh my god, that's- what the hell, that is terrifying. Nice. Watch out! Move! <laughs> Who is this? She's pretty cool. Oh, it's Mikasa! Watch Mikasa become the ultimate hero. And this is why you learn hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah. Interesting. I think this is the first time I can remember seeing Mikasa actually show principles besides just helping Eren. I feel like I have a controversial view on this. Like, I know we're supposed to side with the people and, like, the people who are making sacrifices. I mean, this guy's really hard to root for because he's such a jerk. But it's not like there's nothing to that. Like, people need to eat, you know? Am I nuts? Am I rooting for the, the bad guys again? <laughs> it's complex. But yeah, I feel like they can move the cart out of the way and let the people go in and then get the cart in. That maybe is the way to do that? I don't know. But we're seeing like a real framing of a certain upper class as just being scum. Also, what were you thinking trying to get that giant ass cart through that little hole? Where is Eren? <laughs> what happened with that? I'm getting a little uncomfortable as time passes. Yeah, I'm sure there's some backstory coming for her that we haven't gotten yet. There's a lot we don't know. That wasn't much to go on. I could use a little more. Oh, here we go. 
母さん見て見て子供はどうやったらできるのさあお父さんに聞いてごらんなさい、うん、ねえお父さんあいやお父さんもよく知らないんだあほらもうじきイエーガー先生が来る頃だから<笑> well, I gotta throw Dr. イエーガー under the bus poor Dr. イエーガー Yeah so we know a terrible tragedy is about to befall Mikasa's parents It looks like they live on the outskirts I'm guessing この辺りは子供がいないからな仲良くするんだぞそいつの出方次第だけどエレンそんなんだから I feel like that's a fair thing to say about meeting new people ルスかなアカマンさんイエガーです What? Oh no, was that a different time? The knock wasn't them エレン近くに女の子ミカサはいたか He's literally been right next to you this whole time 父さんは憲兵団を呼んで捜索を要請するお前はふもとで待ってるんだ。This whole thing is bizarre. エレンおい、本当に売れるんだろうな。Oh、God. Yeah, human enemies. That's what I was saying. そいつは東洋人だ。昔は人間にも種類があってな。Interesting. So I feel like that puts it in the actual world, like in our world, but in the future. エコーされたんだ言うことはそれだけかああミカサ逃げなさいお母さんいい加減にしろ I didn't want this backstory actually, now that I think about it. Oh no. What in the. What? Is he with his father or is this just his initiative? This is insane. <laughs> Damn, he's always been like this. <laughs> he's always been nuts. I was really not expecting Aaron to take that into his own hands like that. He's a precocious kid. He got his first kill at nine or whatever. Is it me or is there something really dark about Aaron? Like this is not a normal response. I mean, even though it's a good thing that he saved Mikasa, this is insane. He just stabbed two people to death and then said, it's gonna be okay now, don't worry. I don't think it's gonna be okay. And I think maybe it hasn't been okay for a long time. But I guess this explains why Mikasa is so bonded to him. He literally saved her life, as did her mother. Her mother died trying to protect her. I guess it explains somewhat why her values are more aligned with just protecting people you love and forget the rest, forget others. Although we did see her trying to help the people with the, the food and the passage. Sunny does. <laughs> Whoops. I know, right? It's crazy. Mikasa's turn. Mikasa's <laughs> Um, wow. So I think there's an overall idea to this episode because what she's saying is very similar to what Armin was saying earlier about how this is just the way reality is. This is the way nature is. And you can be blind to it, but you can't ignore the reality of its destruction or the fact that it's strong killing the weak, that the world is merciless. And maybe an extension of that is that given that knowledge, it's your right to do anything you, you can do to survive. And I think there is something true about that. There's something very real about that and something maybe even beautiful about that. There is a lot of cruelty in the world. There is a lot of unfairness. There is a lot of this element of like the strong dominance the weak. Nature or the universe or whatever is not attached to the happiness of anyone or the lives of anyone. And so there's a, there's a cruelty in that. But I think, just me personally, I feel like that can't be the final thought. Because I think where a lot of people take that then is that, well, anything I do is justified because it's not my fault that there's cruelty in the world. It's not my fault that there's, there's just terrible things in the world. And so if these tools exist, then it's my right to use these tools to survive. I feel like that's a path to darkness. And I think that a more complete version of that is seeing that honestly, not shying away from that fact, right? Embracing that, but then striving to overcome it and to not add to the misfortune. You don't want to add to the darkness, you want to be a light in the darkness. I'm kind of really existentially afraid for these characters in these situations because it's hard to imagine them overcoming these things they've experienced and what they've witnessed and becoming non-nihilistic, non-jaded, hateful people. I'm hoping that their camaraderie, I'm hoping that their common vision will elevate them beyond that, but I don't know. <laughs> I know, right? It's insane. How do they lead normal childhoods after this? Maybe they didn't. Aaron was not waiting. 
He had plans. He had big plans. He understands. He was born this way. Yeah, I feel like there are a lot of problems here. His saving her is not what worries me here. It's the way he talks about people as filthy animals that worries me. Like, right here, he just seems like a cold killer. No remorse. Those guys had it coming, you know? But still, little Aaron thinking this way, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. The scarf. That's not exactly how you wear a scarf, okay. Who is this kid? Aaron's in a titan. I guess we're not gonna get that resolved this episode. He's been in there a while, but he's coming out. He's coming out soon. Why don't you be like 10 episodes of character backstory before we see Aaron again? You know, in a way, I would really respect it if Aaron was just dead. The balls that would take to make a show like that and build up the main character in the first four episodes and then just... He's dead. But yeah, I know he's alive. So I guess we're just done with the episodes that are not traumatic. I guess that's just the way it's going to be from now on. Because that was awful. It explains Mikasa a lot. These these people are not, they're not stable. They're not in good places. <laughs> Maybe that should have been obvious earlier. But I'm like, wow, I'm just getting the extent of it now. They're not healthy. That's not a judgment. I mean, like, who could be given this backstory and given the world they live in with these giant man looking things trying to eat them and in fighting among humans, you know, it's a pretty bleak world. I don't disagree with that view. You know, I think it's really easy to have a principled view and talk about the goodness of others and being a good person and all that when you're not fighting for your life. And it's true that if somebody is evil enough or there's just something after you that wants to destroy you badly enough, your virtue is going to do nothing. You know, you're just going to end up dead, most likely. So I don't disagree with them. I don't think they're framing things the wrong way. I don't think they're wrong for fighting for survival. I just think that there's a real darkness to that and there's a danger there and I think that there has to be other things there has to be room for other things too right it can't just be that the world is dark and that nothing matters and the universe is cold it can be something like that does exist and you have to defend yourself and protect the things that you care about but you have to like allow for there to be goodness in the world as well and I think that for these characters the goodness hopefully will come from each other it can't only be that you know, because I feel like that's the path to just self-destruction and just terrible actions. If you can just justify doing anything because the world is inherently cold, you become part of that coldness. There is beauty in the darkness, and I think Mikasa has that with Eren. And Eren has that with his friends, and we see various relationships here with people like that. But it just feels like a big danger for them, and that's a major theme in this episode is them sort of diving deeper into that. But it's all great stuff. It's all really interesting. It's very compelling. It is bizarre. The Eren Mikasa backstory is just really weird. It totally changes a lot of my thoughts about them. Eren was just a born killer. He's just stabbing people. There's something very fantasy-like about this whole thing. And I don't mean that it's a fantasy story. I mean, like, it's surreal who they are and, like, the experiences they've had and the fact that he was able to do that as a kid. Is this all a simulation or something? I, this, there's something bizarre about the whole thing. I can't put my finger on it. But it'll have to wait for four seasons or five seasons for me to have the answers, I guess. But that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time for episode seven, which will probably be dark. That's my guess. It's gonna be very dark.